Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Arduino to print stuff using the thermal printer. And it's a question if this is really a printing because it's more about applying the heat to the thermal paper. And so as a result of applying the heat to the thermal paper, the paper will change the color from white to black. And you can use it to print text in few different fonts, barcodes, QR codes or even images. But you know this already because this is an image from my older project. So in order to use this printer, you will need Arduino board. In my case, I'm using Arduino Uno and some kind of power supply, because even when the printer can run between five to nine volts, the higher voltage you provide, the darker the text will get. So today I'm using power supply from the company called GVDA and they were kind enough to send it to me. So thank you, GVDA. The main advantage of this power supply is the price. It's very cheap, but it seems to be working just fine. Actually, in one of my older videos, I was testing a different product from GVDA and that was this USB soldering iron. And it's quite nice because it has this OLED display and it also produces heat. So I'm wondering if I can just use the soldering iron to draw on the thermal paper. Yeah, let's just actually try that. So according to Wikipedia, 100 degrees Celsius is the minimal temperature to draw something on the thermal paper, but you can see it's barely visible. So let's just up the temperature a little bit. Actually, let's increase it a lot, maybe to 300 degrees Celsius. And yes, indeed, you can use the soldering iron to draw on the thermal paper if you want to. But I guess I will just stick to the thermal printer for today. So let's get started. And let's just start by connecting the thermal printer to Arduino. The printer uses serial communication, which means that you need two wires, RX and TX and the ground. And while a lot of different wires were included in the box, unfortunately the one to connect it to Arduino includes female header pins. Thankfully I have this shield which converts the female header pins on the Arduino board to the male header pins. So it's much easier to connect it together. Coincidentally, the same shield is used on the documentation page and it shows that we should connect the RX to pin number 10 and the X to pin number 11. As already mentioned, we also need to connect the power supply and the cable is provided. It originally had connectors on both ends, but I didn't remove it from one end and I'm simply using those crocodile clips to connect it to the power supply, setting the power supply to 9 volts in constant voltage mode. That's what this CV means. So once everything is connected, let's jump back to the documentation and look for some examples. And if I scroll down, there should be one and this is that one. And you can see that's actually the simplest possible one even though we are including some file but it's only to print the chinese character which we don't really need to do so this one could be removed as well as including the c file which means that we only need to include the software serial library to be able to set the software communication on any pin in this case pin 10 and 11 then start the communication at the certain speed which is 9600 bouts and then we can use the print line to print some stuff and hopefully the printer will print this so let's see if it works so copy the code open the arduino ide and paste the code in here Again, we don't need to include the C file and we don't need to print those Chinese characters. And maybe instead of printing the F robot, let's print hello world. So this should print hello world every 10 seconds. And there are some empty lines before and after the text. I probably don't need those before, but it's a good idea to keep few empty lines after the text because I already know that if you don't do this, it will be actually very hard to see the message until you print something else because the printer head is somehow hidden inside the enclosure. So whatever is being printed is not immediately visible. Let's select the right board. In my case, that's board Arduino Uno and right port and upload this sketch to the Arduino. And once the sketch is uploaded, the printer will immediately print the hello world message and then again after 10 seconds and then again after 10 seconds and so on and so on. So the great news is that it works and it's actually very simple to interface. If all you want to do is to just print text, you just send the text using the serial print line function and the printer will print it. But what if you want to do something more? In that case, you can scroll down in the documentation to find a PDF file called General Instruction Set. So if I open this PDF file, this should include some instructions for the printer. So if I scroll down, you can see that there are some instructions like print a new line or jump to the next tab location. I'm more interested in something that's more visible, for example, some different font. So for example, in here, there is a comment to set the double width mode, which I guess will make the font much wider. And there is a comment to cancel the double width mode. So let's just use those two comments to change the appearance of the text. Scroll down in the file and find the comment number 11 which is this one, set the double width mode, and it looks like that we need to set the hexadecimal code 1B and 0E. So let's just try that. Before sending the string, I will copy the print line. Actually, I probably don't need a print line, I probably just need a print. And I want to print some hexadecimal values, and I can do it by typing backward slash X, and then the hexadecimal value, which should be 1B, and the second one was 0E. So those should make the font bold. And let's maybe change the message to something like this is white. And so if you want to cancel it, so cancel the double bit mode, we want to send the values 1B and 14. So in here, I'll turn it back by saying 1B and 14 and send the message, this is normal. Let's upload this to Arduino and see what we get. And as you can see, the first line is bold while the second line is normal. So with just sending two special characters, we were able to define how the font should look like. 
but what I'm most interested about is printing some images. And there is an example in the documentation called print bitmap. If I look at the sketch file, you can see that the main thing that's happening in here is writing this show variable, which is being defined in the external C file. So this is the show array. And it seems to be a mixture of commands. So those are most likely commands together with the data. So I guess this is the data of the image. And there is a comment saying that this is explained in the general instruction set commands 34 and 35. So in the PDF file, the command 34 is called the figure is filled with the module, which is quite a cryptic name for saying that I want to print an image, right? And you should send the hexadecimal code of 1B and 2A. And then there is this M, which I guess sets some uh, format. So in our case, it's 28 in hex, which is a 32 in decimal, which means 24 point single density. And then there is this H, which I guess is the other dimensions and the HH, which I guess is the multiplier of this first dimension. So in our case, 24 times zero is still 24. And the FA in hex is 250, which is the other dimension. So 24 by 250 image. You can actually preview this image using the image to cpp website so what i usually do is i use this tool to convert the image into the c style array but i can also do it the other way around so i can take this array without of course those comments so just this array which i believe is the content of the image copy it into the image to cpp website make sure that the dimensions are set correctly so it was 24 by 250 and then select read horizontal or read vertical whatever looks better and i think that the read as horizontal makes more sense this is looks like an image it's a strange content some circle arrow and and whatever it is but it looks correct it also tells me that the images are probably stored or sent or rotated by 90 degrees because i believe this will end up as one line but let's just try that let's copy this sketch into the arduino ide without this extra text and you can see that we are including some header file which is defined by the absolute path which i don't think it's a good idea so what i will do instead is i will create this file inside the same folder as the arduino sketch by clicking this arrow and select the new tab and adding a new name which will be this image.h click the ok button and we have new file and we will paste the content from the documentation so this piece of the code should go into our h file save the h file and in the code change this to be just the image.h without the path and if i try to upload this on arduino i get an error saying you know something is wrong with the program and everything looks bright but if you look closely this bracket looks somehow different than this bracket so somehow you know it was automatically changed to have a different bracket symbol which is not allowed so i have to change this to a normal bracket as well as this one and that should fix the issue actually not there is another problem so id is obviously not the x value so i guess that might be i don't know maybe one d instead of id i don't think that this picture e is being used anywhere in the code so we can as well just delete it anyway let's upload it one more time and see what we got and as you can see the image is being printed for some unknown reason is cropped on the bottom part i'm not quite sure why however it was at this point when i realized that there must be a better way how to print stuff and there actually is and that is by using a dedicated library so a similar printer was also available on the Adafruit website. It's out of stock for now, but it has all the documentation and more importantly, it has a dedicated library. So let's try that library. Inside the Arduino IDE, go to sketch, include library and manage libraries. In here, type in, for example, thermal. So this is the library that we want, the Adafruit thermal printer library. You can see I already have this installed, but if you do not, you should click the install button first. Then go to file, examples, Adafruit thermal library, which is this one, and select one of the examples, for example, the A print test. We have to make few changes. So our TX pin is set to pin number 11 and the RX pin is set to pin number 10. Also, our printer operates at the speed of 9600 baud. So we should change this line. So serial begin to set the right speed, which is 9600. And let's upload it to Arduino. And the test print nicely showcases all the different options. So we have different sizes of the font, different spacing and alignment. You can even make it bold or underlined. I believe those lines down here are supposed to be barcodes, but judging from the image from the Adafruit website, it looks like it's not being printed properly. And I guess that's because it's probably using a different commands. There is also the QR code, which is actually just an image in the Adafruit sketch, but this printer should have a dedicated functions to print QR codes on the fly. Finally, there is this small logo, this small image, and what I would like to do is print my own image. I already have some screenshots from my older projects that I've used for the menu project, so I will use those, at least some of those. So what I will do is I will open this Photoshop file in the Photopia, which is a free online editing tool, and then export those using File Export Layers. Jump into the Image to CPP website and select the image. 
scroll down and click the generate code and copy the output into the Arduino sketch. So I'll place it inside of the old image, so I'll delete the content of the logo and place our image. I don't need this array and I will probably use this line from the original logo, but make it of course bitmap screenshot gauges and the program memory only needs to be there once. I will copy the name into our main sketch and use it for printing the image which is somewhere down here. So printing the bitmap, width is 128, the height is 64 and the image name is our image name. And I will get rid of most of the other stuff because I don't want to print all those labels and text and barcodes. So I'll end up with something like this. And the image is indeed printed but it's very tiny and it makes sense because the resolution of this printer is much bigger than 120 by 64 pixels i believe you can print something between 400 to 500 pixels on one line and our image is only 128 pixels wide and since i want to keep the pixelated look of the image i will simply resize it in photopia so in here select image image size and instead of 128 by 64 pixels i will type in 256 by 128 pixels now the important thing is to make sure that the resample method is not to set to billionaire because that will result in a blurry image you want to set the resample to the nearest neighbor that will make sure that those pixels will be crisp and again exported using the file export layers i will use the same image to cpp website and you can see that now the image is bigger generate the code and copy this into our sketch and i will use the same name except with the x to suffix in the main sketch i will use this new name and i have to change the dimensions to be 256 by 128 now at some point with those big images we will be getting out of memory but thankfully those images are stored in the program memory and we have 32 kilobytes of program memory for arduino uno and so the image size 256 pixels by 128 pixels takes about 4 kilobytes you can see down here that we are using 26 percent of the program memory So once printed, this bigger image looks much better, but I feel like that it could be even bigger. So let's do the resizing one more time. And instead of resizing it to double size, let's use three times the size. And here it is, a screenshot from my OLED project being printed on the terminal printer. I have to say that I enjoy working with this printer quite a lot, and I will probably try to use it for my other projects as well. I mean, it's quite a satisfying feeling seeing something being printed on the printer from Arduino. If you plan to purchase this printer, I would highly recommend to get a spare roll of paper, because it looks like that we are printing only, you know, a few lines here and there, but I've probably printed about like the half of the length already, and that was just to do all the testing. Also, something that I haven't realized up until now is that this blinking icon is actually a button. And when you press it, it will move the paper slightly. So I take back my comment about needing to include the empty lines. You don't have to do that. If you don't see what you've just printed, you can push this button. Also, if you turned off the power, then push this button and then turn on the power. The printer is supposed to print some test page, but somehow this is not working for me. It just keeps printing only two lines. That said, there was some test page included in the box and it looks like this. And that's it for today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please put those down in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye. Actually, you know what? There is one more clip that I will include. But if you like those oddly satisfying videos, this is, this is definitely not for you. You should probably close the video right now. Okay, don't say that in for you. And that's really it. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye.